Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, YouTube Music, Tidal, Amazon Music, Kobuz, there are a whole lot of music streaming apps that all do fundamentally the same thing. So how on earth are you supposed to know which one to use? Well, never fear, because this month I signed up for four of the biggest ones so I could compare them all head to head, and I'm gonna let you know the scoop. Hey guys, it's Kate with Apt, and recently I found myself in the market for a new music streaming service with absolutely no idea what to get. After pulling my friends, coworkers, and the internet, I ended up narrowing it down to four of the most popular services, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and YouTube Music. When I signed up for these, I didn't have a subscription to any of them, and was going in about as blind to them as a person can reasonably be nowadays. All this to say, I'm going to compare my experiences as a brand new user and let you guys know which ones came out on top and which ones fell short. I tried my absolute best to start out with all of them as equal as possible. I signed up for them on the same day, I put all the same information in, and I made only one playlist for each with the same five songs, all of which are songs that I love and represent different genres. From there though, I let myself take turns using all of them, picking music to listen to as I was driving, at work, and at home relaxing. Let's see how they stack up. All right, so let's start right off the bat with Amazon. So Amazon has two different music subscriptions. There's Amazon Prime Music, which is included with your regular Prime membership, and Amazon Music Unlimited, which is $9.99 a month if you have Prime and $10.99 a month if you don't. A family plan for up to six devices will cost you $16.99 a month, and a verified student plan will cost you $5.99 a month. Prime Music gives you access to lots of different playlists and radio stations, but it has ads and won't let you pick what specific songs or albums you want to hear. On the other hand, upgrading to Unlimited lets you have complete freedom when it comes to picking your songs and crafting your own playlists. So for purposes of this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about Amazon Unlimited since that's the most comparable to the other streaming services. For me, the first and biggest pro is that of all the ones tested, this one had one of the most superior sound qualities, courtesy of its Dolby Atmos and Ultra HD options for audio. It's important to note that they don't have this available for all songs, and you will have to manually select these options under settings if you want them. But I would highly recommend it, as in my opinion, it makes the audio quality just that much better. I was able to hear things in songs that I had never heard before. Another pro that I noticed with Amazon is that they truly seem to have a huge catalog of songs. I wasn't able to find a lot of data on exactly how many they have compared to other services, but what I can tell you is I was able to find official recordings of songs from some of my favorite artists that I didn't even know existed. When I tried to look for these on other apps, they didn't have them. Or if they did, it was usually much poorer audio quality as it had been taken from a secondhand source. So if you're looking for deep cuts, Amazon might be the way to go. Aside from just music, Amazon service offers podcasts, tons of playlists, radio stations, and a couple specially curated stations for your listening tastes. But that takes me into things I didn't like so much about Music Unlimited. First of all, there's only two personalized listening stations called My Soundtrack and My Recent Plays and More. They suggest new music for you, but in my experience, I overall didn't love a lot of the songs they picked out for me. It would have been nice to have multiple curated stations for different music vibes. However, it does recommend some of their many, many playlists based on your tastes, but these aren't playlists that have been customized for you, just some of the ones Amazon already has. Another thing I didn't like about the app interface? Alexa. You know her, you love her, or maybe you hate her. And if you do, I might think twice about getting Amazon Music. Because Alexa is labeled as one of the four main menu options on the bottom of the screen, I kept accidentally clicking on her, which would immediately take over the screen and activate her listening. If you turn on her hands-free mode, you can also activate her by saying her name when the app is opened, but it doesn't work when the app is closed, which I think defeats the point. Honestly, if you have the app open, your interface should be simple enough to operate that you don't need a personal assistant, so it strikes me as redundant. And the worst part? You can't turn her off. This is nitpicky, but I also hate that when you go to Recently Played and you click on an album or playlist or what have you, it'll just start playing. I'd much prefer a model where you get the list of tracks up first so you can choose what you want to listen to. 
And while I like their x-ray feature, which provides fun facts about the artist and song you're listening to, I'm not a fan of the way they did the lyrics. I wish I could scroll more easily instead of constantly being redirected to whatever lyric is currently playing. Another thing to note is that of these four apps I'm comparing today, Amazon is the only one that doesn't have a year in review style feature, giving you stats about your listening habits throughout the year, which could really be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. Moving on, let's take a look at Apple Music. Apple Music doesn't have a free tier, so if you want to use it, you are going to have to pay that membership price of $10.99 a month for individuals, $16.99 a month for a family membership, which includes up to 10 devices, and $5.99 a month for students. You can also get it as part of Apple's bundle called Apple One, which will include other Apple subscriptions such as Apple TV and News. Now, there's a common misconception that Apple Music is only for iOS devices. While the app is primed for iOS since that's the system it was built for, it can also operate on Android, Windows, or in a browser. So if you have those, don't count it out just yet. When it comes to audio quality, Apple Music is also pretty superb. It has Dolby Atmos spatial audio and lossless audio automatically on. So if you want to turn those off, you'll have to go into Apple Music on your phone settings. In that same section, you can control a lot of different aspects of the sound, such as the bass, the treble, or the vocals, which in my opinion is a definite plus. But to me, the real star of this streaming app is the features. In this respect, nobody is doing it like Apple. Some of my favorites include Shazam integration, so you can Shazam any song that you hear, find out what it is, and Apple will take you right to it. In my opinion, Apple also has the best lyric feature. It shows lyrics in real time, highlights the words as they're said, karaoke style, and will demonstrate when different people are singing by putting their lyrics on opposite sides of the screen. Speaking of karaoke, a big innovation is Apple Music Sing, an option on the lyric screen that will allow you to turn down the vocals of a song, instantly creating a karaoke track. While it doesn't work for every single song out there, this feature is seriously fun. Apple Music has also updated a lot since it first came onto the scene, and it's adopted some of the key features that made its competitors so popular. For example, Spotify Wrapped is pretty much an entire sensation once a year when it's released, so in response, Apple created Replay, which sums up all your listening statistics into one social media-friendly package. They also adopted Spotify's Like system. With Apple, you can favorite a song, and it will automatically be added to your library and to your favorites playlist. Another little-known thing about Apple Music is that when connected to Apple CarPlay, you can have SharePlay, which will allow the other folks in your car to join in from their devices and contribute to the music, with no Apple Music subscription required on their part. This is pretty similar to Spotify's Jam feature. Apple has a good amount of curated playlists based on your listening history, and they also offer live radio the old-fashioned way, with industry hosts and everything. Your subscription will also include access to the Apple Music Classical app, an entire listening app devoted to classical music. However, and this is one of the big drawbacks of Apple Music, it doesn't include podcasts or audiobooks within the same app. Instead, Apple has those both represented as separate apps within the iOS system, which can be frustrating, especially if you're an Android user. But on the other hand, it's my opinion that this is the simplest interface to use. It's not overwhelming you in your main dashboard with anything other than music, and with every potential action clearly labeled, it's easy to get the hang of. But it will definitely be more so for those with iOS devices, which is what I have. And that's another drawback if you're not an Apple user. On to Spotify. <laughs> ah, Spotify, the people's streaming service. Or at least that's the impression I've gotten since it is the most widely used, but we'll get to that. Spotify does have a free version, and if you're using it on desktop, it's actually pretty good. You have minimal ads and you get to choose what songs you want to play and make your own playlists. The mobile free version isn't quite as good, unfortunately, and using it means essentially you can't play specific songs so much as shuffle songs, and you'll have to deal with ads pretty frequently. If you upgrade to the premium version, you're looking at a cost of $10.99 per month for an individual, but they also have a duo tier that will cost $14.99 for two premium accounts. Their family plan is $16.99 a month for six premium accounts, and their student plan is $5.99 a month and includes Hulu. So what is there to like about Spotify? Well, actually a lot. 
One thing that you might think about is that I'm willing to bet a lot of your friends have Spotify. And while you shouldn't jump off a bridge just because your friends do, having the same streaming service as them will benefit the app's social aspects. You can add friends, check out what they're listening to, and create playlists together. You can have a Spotify jam, either in person or from a distance, where you and your friends can listen together and add songs to the queue. There's also some options to go into private mode if you're listening to things you'd rather your friends not see. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Anyways, there are also a ton of other features that make this interface a common favorite. When you're listening to an artist, Spotify will provide you with information about them, including if they have any upcoming live shows. There's also some pretty incredible cohesion between devices that none of these other platforms are really able to match. You can be playing the music from your desktop, but pause it from your phone, or cue more music, and so on and so forth. They also have a preview feature that I like, where you're basically scrolling through clips of songs, sort of like TikTok for an album is the best way I can think to describe it. For me, I think this is a great way to see if you might like a song without listening to it all the way through. Another thing to note, Spotify's recommendation algorithm is pretty much in a league of its own. There are a ton of personalized playlists to choose from based on your favorites and songs Spotify thinks you would like. They even have a station with a very realistic AI DJ curated especially for your listening profile. There's a lot of community playlists, so it's really easy to find compilations other people have made. And in addition to music, Spotify has a ton of podcasts, some of which are Spotify exclusives that you might not be able to get elsewhere. Something else that really impressed me is that there are a ton of audiobooks on the service. And with any membership plan except student, you get 15 hours a month of audiobook listening. I love listening to those in the car or while I'm getting ready in the morning, so this was a huge plus for me. So what did I not like about Spotify? Well, for starters, the audio quality. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I personally didn't notice a ton of difference, but it's important to note that Spotify doesn't have lossless or high-res audio, so you're not getting as high of a quality as you would with Amazon or Apple. Also, Spotify doesn't pay their artists as much as any of the other apps I tried, which might not be a big deal for you, especially if you mostly listen to pretty big artists. But if you want to give your favorites as much support as possible, Spotify is probably not the way to go. And finally, we have YouTube Music. While YouTube Music doesn't have a desktop app, they do have a free version that you can create an account with in your browser. This free version operates a lot like free YouTube. You can add songs to your library and make playlists, but you're gonna have a lot of ads. Once you do decide to upgrade, you have a couple of different options. You can get YouTube Music by itself, which costs about the same as the other apps, $10.99 a month for an individual account, $16.99 a month for a family membership, including up to six accounts, and $5.49 a month for a student account. However, you can also get YouTube Music as part of Premium, where you pay a little more but get both YouTube Music and YouTube Premium. This is gonna cost $13.99 a month for individuals, $22.99 a month for family, and $7.99 for students. And honestly, it's been a big factor in why some people have been switching to YouTube Music. If you're buying Premium anyways to get rid of those YouTube ads and the services included, it makes sense to use it. However, when I got it, I just got the music subscription, no premium included, and there began my problem. I was sort of under the impression that I would be given a free trial of YouTube Music, mostly because all of the other apps have free trials. But it turns out that was not the case, and I got charged the monthly fee as soon as I signed up. YouTube offers variants on a free trial. I just checked my offers, and it turns out I could have gotten a free trial on a family membership plan but it almost seems like they're trying to hide this from you. You have to go into your settings on the YouTube mobile app to see what offers you're eligible for. The lack of a month of free music might not bother you, but it definitely is a strike against them in my book. I initially was really excited to try YouTube music for one main reason. There are some songs that I love that don't have official recordings out on streaming platforms, but are in videos on YouTube. For example, like recordings taken from live performances. On YouTube Music, you can add videos to your music playlists and listen to the audio from those videos as if they're songs. But when I went to add the ones I wanted, they weren't there. 
This happened multiple times, and I'm pretty sure it's because of copyright infringement and licensing issues, but it is nonetheless extremely disappointing. I mean, that was pretty much the main reason I wanted to try this, and it didn't even really work. So do with that information what you will. They will have some official live performance videos for you to watch while you listen, but only if it's posted with permission from the source itself. Okay, so let's talk about what I liked about YouTube Music. I liked that when you play a song, you can switch pretty seamlessly from that song to the music video, and it'll pick up from the point in the song where you switched. Honestly, video integration is done really well throughout YouTube Music, and I wouldn't expect anything less, since YouTube is the king of video. They have a pretty good mix of curated playlists and radio stations. There are a ton of my mixes and radio stations based off of songs or artists you like, as well as YouTube made playlists for all types of genres. There's also somewhat of a social aspect. You can read and make comments on videos and listen to playlists made by other users. And the interface should be pretty easy to use by anyone who's familiar with YouTube, which I think most people are. On to the cons! <laughs> Beyond the struggles I've already talked about, YouTube is also lacking that hi-fi audio quality that Apple and Amazon bring to the table, although it never really sounded so bad as to be something I noticed. They have a few podcasts, but not a lot, and they didn't have some of the ones I searched for specifically, even though they're pretty popular. And some songs didn't have lyrics yet in the lyric function, and I'm talking about songs that they should have the lyrics to. So there's really not a lot of cool features, and the ones that they do have don't always work. Alright, that was my experience as a new user with all four different music streaming platforms. So which one would I recommend to a friend? I would choose... Well, honestly, it depends. <laughs> I know, I know, but don't worry, I'm going to help you out. Here is what I would recommend based on your needs. I would recommend YouTube Music if you've already purchased or are going to buy YouTube Premium. It's included for free with your purchase, and though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, it is a perfectly serviceable platform for listening to music. And that's about it. <laughs> I would recommend Amazon Music Unlimited if you have Prime already and want the cheapest option, only by a dollar, but still. You have Amazon smart speakers or devices like Echo. You listen to a lot of unusual songs, especially older ones, or want access to artists' deep cuts. Or if you want the best audio quality app that also has podcasts. I would recommend Spotify if you want to get the free version of one of these services, if you like being recommended new music, if you want to get the one that your friends have and see what they're listening to, if you listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts, if you like being up to date on your favorite artists, or if you want to control your music from multiple devices. And finally, I would recommend Apple Music if you want customizable high audio quality, if you have a lot of Apple or iOS devices, if you want the most simple and easy to use interface, if you want to download Apple Music Classical, if you want to pay artists the most money possible with your streams, if you want access to their many features like Sing or Live Radio. So which one am I choosing to go with? Me personally, I'm going with Apple Music because of my amount of iOS devices, the features, and the audio quality. But it was a very tough decision, and I was glad I got to try all four of these before I committed. If you made it to the end of this video, comment down below and let us know which one you use and why you like it. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our tech-related videos. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.